reason why things do not work sometimes is because we have three key paralyzing factors. Um, the short term, the competition and trends. And we just saw an example of what happened during COVID-19 with brands panicking and starting to react because they thought that they needed to say something. And this is what happened. When we first opened our doors. Since 1926. Since 1978. For 60 years. For 75 years. For over 80 years. In 90 years. Over 100 years. Nationwide has been on your side. Restaurants have always been there for you. Nissan has been with you through thick and thin. We will do what we've always done. Take care of people. We're people. 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 Family. 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 Families. 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 Even now. Especially now. Especially now. Right now. Now more than ever. More than ever. Today. More than ever. Today. More than ever. In times like this. At times like these. During these difficult times. In these troubled times. Challenging times. Trying times. In these times of uncertainty. During this time of great uncertainty. During these uncertain times. During these uncertain times. In uncertain times. In uncertain times. Uncertain times. Unprecedented times. Unprecedented times. Unprecedented times. This unprecedented moment in our history. It's time of social distancing. While things have slowed down. As we turn more inside. While the doors may be closed. While the distance between us has gotten bigger. The more we stay apart, we still find ways to stay close, even when we're apart. I will stop there. The video goes on for another two minutes. So if you have the, the, the chance, you can easily find it on YouTube. Is why all brands are doing the same during COVID-19. And this is what happens when you see you can't remember anything. Everybody's doing the same, using the same music, the same tonality, giving the same message. There is no clear point of view of any of these companies and they are all doing it because there is pressure that we feel that we need to say something, which it so, very often is not really necessary if it's not coming from your values, from the core, from what you are really all about. And then this is the situation that happens. So the trend is actually not your friend uh, very often because we lose sight of who we are as a brand and as a company. We don't stick to our values. We don't stick to what is important for us and what is really for the long term. So what we do is we look at, oh my gosh, I have to do something right now because there is pressure out there. And this is the example of what happened uh, recently as well, literally in the, in the last few days uh, with a lot of companies. Why is the, the trend not your friend? You know, what are some of the things that we've been seeing in the last uh, few years with regards to trends on, on branding and advertising and marketing and communication? It was all about storytelling. We all have to do stories because stories are great. It's all about purpose. It's all about purpose driven. And we need to do brand activism. Brands need to stand for something. They need to have a voice. They need to say what they are all about. Yes. And no, yes, if storytelling is part of your core and you can tell a beautiful story, yes, but telling stories for the sake of telling stories is not very good for a brand or be purpose-driven when you don't really have a clear purpose. What happens very often is brands look at other brands. So when a brand is doing storytelling and it works really well because they have a very powerful story to tell, then we all think, oh, we need to do storytelling as well. But maybe we don't have such a powerful story to tell. Or there is a company which is truly purpose-driven with a mission, which is so embedded in the company already for years. And, all the, and they're doing great. And then all the brands look at them and they're like, oh, we need to do that too. We need to have a purpose. 
And then it very often becomes cosmetic and it comes very forced. Or we need to be brand activists. We need to stand for something and have an opinion. Now, when you are a company or a brand like Patagonia, for example, these are true brand activists. These are the brand is and the business is purely based on environmental activism. So, yes, they do have the opportunity and the license to stand for something and to have an opinion because they are activists. But then when a company like L'Oreal comes out these last days after what happened in the US and around Black Lives Matter, and they say that speaking out is worth it, then if this is not true to the core values of uh, L'Oreal, and if they are not really true to this, then they might get a lot of PR backlash and crisis because of this. And this is exactly what happened. A few days ago, L'Oreal posted this on Instagram, speaking out is worth it. Now, Manro Bergdorf was the first trans model for L'Oreal. In 2017, her contract was finished by L'Oreal because she spoke out about white supremacy and racism. In 2017, L'Oreal said that because her comments are at odds with our values, we have decided to end our partnership with her because she spoke about racism. Now, because we are in 2020, and now it is good that brands need to have stands and that they need to say something, then speaking out is worth it, which is not coming from a place of true values. So what happened then, now in 2020, is that actually L'Oreal had to have a public apology, and they have now offered uh, Monroe Bergdorf a sit on the diversity and inclusion advisory board for L'Oreal, which is very nice, but you can imagine that all of this happened because of what happened. And this is a brand that suddenly gets themselves involved in a lot of controversy, which is not really necessary. If you only stick to yourself, if you are true to your values and you do what is good for you and good for your customers, and do not jump into what is nice to do and what is on trend to do, then you could have saved yourself a lot of trouble. Not only this, because I don't think that L'Oreal is going to lose their business tomorrow because of this. I don't think that people are going to stop buying L'Oreal, not at all. But for example, what it does from a PR perspective, what it does internally, uh, the people working at L'Oreal, I can imagine that this doesn't feel good. And you don't have to put yourself in a place of trouble unnecessarily. So this is why we have to be a little bit watching what we are doing over time. If we have a clear point of view as a brand from the beginning and we go on for the long term, then we will avoid this very difficult situations that we found ourselves when we jump into something that it's momentary or that is because it's on fashion right now or because it's on trend. Therefore, I believe that what brands need to do, what it's good to do for your marketing, what is good to do is to have a longer game plan. It is not for just now. It is not just for three months. It is not just for this year. It's ideally for the longer game. And then we will be able to stand out from the rest and to be different and to have a point of view that we will all rally as a company together and that we'll put it out. Even if we work short time for a company, even if we are only going to be one of the many people that are going to be working in, in a company, it is so much better to just have that longer term view even if we're only going to be there for, for two years or, 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 or three years or five or 10 years. So if we play a game thinking, what is it that we want to change, then we can get somewhere. Now, what was the longer game for me? What was my situation? Because it's nice for me to talk about 
what my thoughts and beliefs are, but I want to share with you my own personal experience of transformation and of really standing for something and on trying to separate myself from my competition. I'm taking you back to 2012. I was then, I became the brand director for Vodafone in the Netherlands. And I was there for, um, as a brand director for five years. I was in total 12 years in the company. In the last five years, I had the beautiful opportunity to become the brand director. And this is what I got past. This was my situation. Everybody the same, everybody fighting, everybody screaming, everybody talking about price, everybody talking about telephones, everybody talking about gigabytes and internet and subscriptions. And I was in an environment and I was in a company that it is about connecting people, that it is about telecommunications. I believe in the beauty of technology. I believe that technology can be a force for good. I believe that technology can really solve a lot of issues in society. I believe that we are all about bringing progress. We can bring progress to businesses. We can bring progress to societies. There is so much good that technology can do with the core of the business, with the core product that we have. And this was everything we were doing. I was, I was having a lot of difficulty with this because I believed we could do so much more than that. And I wanted to separate myself from my competition. I wanted to be different than this. I wanted to be unique. I wanted to have a point of view. I didn't want to be just one more in the line of people. And I understood that I had to play a dual game. I understood that I had to play a game of I need to deliver the business. But on the other hand, I want this brand to be doing something good. I want to prove that technology can be a force for good and that we can really have a true positive effect and a true positive impact in people's lives. Now, that's very far from what you just saw. <laughs> and that's a difficult place to be in a difficult game to play because I knew it was going to take me a really long time to try to change this. But I said, I am going to try to do it. And I posed myself the question, and this is the question that I pose a lot of brands. What is actually your brand fighting? And fighting, I don't mean in a negative way. I mean it in a, in a strong way. What, what's, what's the cause behind? What's the force that is going to get you to go out there and try to change things. What is it that you're trying to bring? I am trying to show that technology can really be good for people, that connection is a beautiful thing. And we are providing this with Vodafone, that we can help businesses grow through technology by using our technology, that we don't necessarily have to be the bad guys, the bad people, you know, mobile phones, everybody's getting disconnected, everybody's, well, now in what we are experiencing right now, I'm talking to you through technology based in Amsterdam, in my house, and you are all over the world, thanks to technology that this can happen. We are seen often as the bad guys, but I wanted to show also that there is a lot of beauty and a lot of positive things to bring to people and to their lives. So find what is your brand fighting? I was fighting for something. I was trying to do good with technology. So once we know what we are fighting, then it is very important that we create our own path. I said, I am going to follow my own path. I'm not going to follow the trends. I am not going to follow my competition. I am not going to follow the short term. I am going to follow my own. And if you follow your own path and you believe in that, then really you can look to the long term. You can look to the longer game. And then what is happening day and night and left and right and what everybody's doing and what everybody's panicking about and what everybody starts doing the same then I don't pay attention to that. I pay attention to what is my brand about? What is my fight about? 
And what is the path that I need to follow for myself and for this brand and for the marketing of this company and for the branding of this company? So that is a core exercise that I do very often with companies like, okay, let's find out what's the fight we are going to have and what's the path that you are going to follow. Because if you do that, then you are going to separate yourself from everybody else because you're not paying attention to that. And then you will start being different. You will start doing different. You will start doing your own unique way. And that will be totally not the same as anybody else because it's about you and your company. So what did I do? I said, okay, first of all, I am going to move away from those advertisements that you saw, and I am going to bring humanity to this brand. Technology is very often cold. It's distant. It's difficult to understand. I want to bring warmth, and I want to bring the human side and the human face to technology and to this brand. That's one thing. The other thing I want to do is to see how technology can come in and can become a force for good. So what can technology do? Let us look every three to four months to one different issue in society that is going on that we can come in and do something and try to help or try to solve the problem. So for example, we look at uh, elderly people, old people, it's not that they don't want to be in the WhatsApp group with their families. It's that they don't know how to use WhatsApp. They don't know how to use a mobile phone. So what can we do in order to help them? How can we, for example, bring video calling, like for us, it's so normal, but for the lady that we used in our campaign, she had not seen her twin sister in Australia for 26 years because they don't know about FaceTiming and video calling. So we created video calling through their television for them and now they see each other every day. We had workshops around the country helping elderly people to become knowledgeable with technology. After four months, we said, what is the next issue that we can try to solve? What is the next thing that we want to fight? Okay, let's look at teachers and students. Teachers and students are separated because there is this connection because the teachers are not so technologically advanced as the students. And you can Google everything these days. So they are becoming disconnected because children are bringing the smartphones to the class and that's a problem. Okay, so how can we turn that around and not make it a problem, but make it a solution? All right, so we created an app, for example, by which teachers could fill in questions for their students and the students would have to answer a multiple choice question before they could open their phones. And you know how many times they look <laughs> into their phones per day. So every time they wanted to open their phone, they had to answer a question that was written by their teacher. Uh, and we made a campaign around these stories. Uh, we looked at homeless people, homeless people, they, they, they don't have much, but they, they have a simple phone so they can receive SMSs. So we try to help them by sending them information where they could get help and where they could get care. We looked at traffic and bicycles in the Netherlands. Um, that's a huge problem because everybody's on the bike, but everybody's also on their phones. So there again, we looked at how can technology be good instead of being the bad guy? How can we try to help the situation. And we created a jacket that indicates people where you are going because people are not signaling that it's connected to your phone and to the jacket with LED lights so that people would put away their phone and not use their phone while they're cycling. And every four months, a new campaign and another campaign and another campaign and another campaign for years so that we could start turning around the brand consideration for Vodafone. My key goal here was to transform this brand so that people would consider Vodafone first. And what happens when you create more brand consideration is that that is a proxy for sales eventually. Not tomorrow, 
not the day after, not in three months, but increasing your brand consideration increases your sales. So it's not only that I am doing a different type of branding, it is not that I am separating myself from my competition. Look at, at this and how different it is from what we were doing. Therefore, Vodafone really stood out in the mix of all of these brands. We were doing something every three to four months that was putting Vodafone in the consideration of people's minds. And when you do that and people have a preference for you, then at the end, that will turn to deliver better financial results because people will buy your company and your product so much more than the rest. And so it was. So this is what I wanted to share with you with regards to separating yourself, choosing your course of action, choosing what you want to fight for, and then go ahead and do it for a long period of time without looking left and right to what everybody's doing. So I would love to share with you a few of the campaigns that we did. Vodafone wants to connect everybody to live a better today and build a better tomorrow. So we created Powerful Connections, a long-term brand engagement program that proves the positive impact of technology on society. In the dark days of December, we use technology to connect elderly with their families. We reunited twin sisters, Truce and Harry, at the push of a button. Dick! And in real life. Their story helped us to set the agenda. Ouders hebben vaak wel een smartphone, maar geen idee wat je daar allemaal mee kunt. We supplied starter kits and organized smartphone workshops for elderly people throughout the country. In the spring of 2016, we created the Smart Jacket to spark the societal conversation on the use of smartphones in traffic. The Smart Jacket is an interactive jacket that uses your smartphone to communicate to other road users where you're going. Right after summer, we launched Back to School. Telefoons zijn tegenwoordig nergens meer weg te denken, maar geldt dat ook voor het klaslokaal? An initiative that wants to reconnect teachers and students with the use of mobile technology. Together with teachers, we help students pass their exams with an app that turns their smartphone into a learning tool. <laughs> and together with Google and the Ministry of Education, we encourage teachers to embrace digital tools in the classroom. In the cold winter of 2016, we showed how a mobile phone is a vital tool for anyone that becomes homeless. Aan geslaagde proef in Amsterdam komt er ook een WhatsApp en SMS dienst voor daklozen in Utrecht, Brabant en Limburg. Street Messenger is a Vodafone initiative that informs homeless people where to find help and care. Finally, we created Get the Flow, an app for stuttering kids that uses popular rap to train speech skills. Mitch was the hero of the campaign. Is that Mitch? And together with his idols, Miss Montreal and Ali B, he created a tongue twister rap song. Challenging all Dutch kids to speak more and stutter less. Overall, we showed that with a commitment to positive impact, we can truly connect everybody to live a better today and build a better tomorrow. I think you can you can see what a different brand that that was. Um, this took approximately five years, the whole thing from the very beginning, um, going from those original ads that you saw till this kind of branding and this kind of communication and marketing. But the beautiful thing of doing something like this is that you keep on sending a message that it's from the core of your business, that it is from the core of your values, and that is really using your services to try to make a difference, to try to make a change without looking at what everybody else is doing. And it was only to the better result of the, of the company and making the brand much more human, much more alive, and much more outstanding. So if we want to, to recap, if we want to affect change, and hopefully we can affect big change, we 
need to realize that doing good is good for business and that doing good doesn't have to be contrary to the business and that doing good doesn't also necessarily have to be what everybody else is doing. Doing good needs to come from us, from what we believe on, for what we stand for. Therefore, when we really operate from a short term perspective, it's paralyzing. When we operate from what our competition is doing, reacting, panicking, or when we are just jumping into the latest trend, then we are really paralyzing ourselves. Because the trend doesn't necessarily have to be your friend and following what everybody else is doing. We need to play a dual game. We are still a business and we still need to deliver. I was in a business that was highly financially driven, that was quarterly driven, shareholder driven with a lot of pressure. So we still need to deliver on the business, but that doesn't mean that from our branding and from our marketing, we cannot look at a longer game to start separating ourselves from our competition. In order to do that, we need to figure out what is our brand fighting? Every brand can fight something. We all can fight something good. And once you find that and you know what you are fighting, then you create your own path. Then you establish your own course of action. And believe me that if you just go on for years, if you just keep on going with this, the great brands that we know, they have followed their own path for the last 20, 30, 50, 60 years. The Patagonias of these worlds, the, the Nikes of these worlds, the Apples of these worlds, all any great brand, even the McDonald's of these worlds, you know, it doesn't matter the product, the great brands that have been there forever, they have had a very clear idea of following their own path. So let's try to do that with something which is from the core of the business. When L'Oreal or when all the companies that are trying to say something about COVID or about Black Lives Matter, when it's not from the core of your business, I really always recommend not to talk about it. Find something that is true to you, that is your product, that is your service, and then start making advertising and campaigns and communication from something that is at the core of what you offer and not just standing for something and having an opinion that is completely unrelated to you. If we do that, then I believe that our brands and our businesses will get a lot of energy, will do a lot of good, and more importantly, will be on the path to being very, very successful. I would love to thank you for your attention. Um, all I am left to say is please connect with me on the second half before we move to questions. If you go to my site there, you will have all the links to uh, LinkedIn, Instagram. I have a podcast. It's called The Second Half, which is on coaching and something else. But um, you have all the links there. You have my email. Please connect. Have a chat. And I'm here for uh, any questions further. I hope Thank I'm going to do this right now. Thank you, Eva. Thank you very much. I really enjoy your your presentation. Well, thank you for the, sorry, for the beginning, I, I, I didn't, I didn't understand it. Sorry that you had to watch a, a, a black. Uh... <laughs> okay, but you did it really good. We were watching you, so it was nice. Okay. We okay. already have a question. Yes. They say, great talk. I'm not sure how familiar you are with open source, but how would you relate the branding strategy to open source? Well, in, in what sense? How do you mean? Maybe from Toby, maybe Toby, you want to come to stage and, and ask? Would you like to join us here? Hello, Toby. It's easy for me to do that since I was <laughs> Hi, Toby. To talk. Uh, thank you for your talk. It was great. And and by the way, we actually just we saw your face uh, for the first part of it. Just yeah. not the slides. And it was actually really impressive. I'm going to do that more often. It was no, really, it was great. You all, can, you know, really listening to you. It, it, it worked really well. So okay. really, don't worry about it. Okay. Happy. Yeah. So I mean, you know, my question was, um, well, I mean, I, I have a, sen a sen uh, sensitivity towards branding, and I understand yeah. it. I mean, it's not my my you know my job, but like I, I have ideas of how that worked, but. Um, yeah. I would be very curious, uh, in, in general, branding is something that from an open source perspective and an open source projects, all companies 
building open source products yeah. and then selling them um, that is both super important and also not well understood and oftentimes dismissed. Engineers don't really right. like uh, the um, yeah. selling yourself aspects of branding, right? Yeah. So I was just curious, um, you know, the strategy you described there, which is one which ties uh, branding to values, essentially, and, and yeah. creating your own path. Yeah. Uh, if you had sort of insights as to um, how you'd want to link that to yeah. open source or so companies building software, yeah. uh, you know, and I also don't know how much about that particular uh, verticals, you know, you're familiar with, right? Well, the, the the thing is that indeed what you're saying now, it's I can I can imagine there is a lot of resistance. I also encounter a lot of resistance, not only in this environment, but in but in many. And, and a lot of it, I believe, comes from examples like what we saw on that video from from COVID-19 is that everybody's doing the same and everybody's selling the same and saying the same. If I were to look at open source or if I were to look at this kind of environment, these guys are in or everybody that is in here is there with a reason. They're trying to do something. They're trying to change something or improve something, right? Otherwise, why would you come into this kind of projects or why would you get into this kind of companies or get into this kind of intention? There is an intention behind. So it's not about selling myself and making advertisements, but even if I would just literally share, for me, it starts internally first or with the people that are involved in the project and in the company. What are we here for? What are we here to to? to change, to improve, to deliver with my effort, right? If we talk about that, I think every brand has a story to tell. It doesn't have to be a flashy advertising that feels fake. That's, that's the problem, what happens very often. But I think anyone that from the core of the business or the intention has a clear goal for wanting to improve something or do something different, why not talk about it? Why not tell it from, from that perspective? And believe me, people feel it. And it's not even that you have to talk about it. It's even others talking about it. It's like I used the example of Patagonia. They don't even do advertising. They don't even do branding. We all know Patagonia and how great they are from people talking about them. So they don't even spend a dime on, they don't even have traditional advertising. So I also don't know why there is this dirty... <laughs> sort of feeling about branding or marketing, maybe sometimes we, we didn't have good examples or we just go with what we see. But I, I truly believe in, in, in the great intention of a company, of a project, of a group of people working together. If they have it, then what's the issue? Why, why not talk about it? Yeah, it's interesting. It sounds like you're, you're tying um, the the what you should really be talking about is the purpose, like the purpose of the project itself yeah. is, is what you should be talking about, which I think yeah. is quite compelling. Mm -hmm. That forces you to have a really good focus on what the project is for too. Yes. Um, and, and purpose, purpose, even like purpose is also very much used and misused and abused <laughs> these days. But indeed, so very often I talk about intention, even more though than, than, than purpose, you know, not, not to make it like too, airy and how purpose is being used these days but indeed what's the intention of these people working together there is one for sure otherwise we wouldn't be here together right no right? that makes sense and that might explain why some open source projects are successful and some less so actually so that, <laughs> it, thank you that that was a night thing yeah. all right yeah well, i'm gonna i'm gonna let you answer other questions if other you're questions, very but, welcome. Uh, thanks, so popping up. thanks thank you so much you too thanks a lot Thank you. If any anyone else have a question, you can write it in the QA. Oh, we we'll have two questions, Eva. Well, we'll have yes. one. What about the fifth one? Okay. Legal industry is changing tremendously, emerging a lot of trending topics, legal tech, smart contracts, etc. Yes. What is it for this professional service in the near future? For legal? Yes. Legal tech, smart contracts. It's yes. On the legal the, industry. The future in terms of branding? I suppose, yes. Well, yeah. it's just for this professional service. So I think, yeah, it will be related to branding. Yeah, I think, I think, for example, yeah, certain certain uh, businesses or areas like legal, um, again, thanks to them, maybe things are happening that they wouldn't be happening if we wouldn't have the support of of of, of legal 
uh, people. If I'm understanding the question correctly, I think the future of, you know, legal uh, entities or companies or the sector, I think that when it would be explained, not from a point of fear or not from a point of negativity, like a lot of legal and privacy and issues, and it all seems like it's all very difficult and not somewhere I want to go or people I want to be related with. But I think they should show us more what they actually make possible instead of everything is obscure and, and it's complicated and, and we don't know what we're talking about. I think thanks to them, we can, I mean, we wouldn't be having this like what we are having right now, right? Yeah. yeah. So what are they making possible for, for people, for businesses, for society? Show us that, right? And, and just be open about it and don't be so scared about that, that we do something that people don't like or that, that gets a lot of pushback from, from politicians or society or consumers, right? Show us the good. Don't try to hide the bad, just show us the good. That's yeah, make it easy. Yeah. Make it easy in general for the people to understand. Yes, 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 because they make a lot possible. So show me what you make possible for us. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you very much, Eva. Are you going to stay now here? Yeah. In the yeah. In the yeah. 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 So what? I hope I understand how I need to go. <laughs> in general, it's easy. You only need to disconnect the micro and the camera. Yes. Then you can go to one table. All right. Great. Connect it again, and then you can talk to the people. Perfect. So people in the table, if they connect the micro and the camera, they can talk. All right. So they can ask you the questions. So thank you very much, Emma. Thank you so much for having you here. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 So yes, you have Eva in the tables if you have any questions and we will come back to the next talk in 15 minutes. So now time to network and to learn new things.